Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Now then, I wanted to do something a little bit different for this week's video. Nearly every single day I walk around this unit and obviously I check my plants and a lot of times I get a lot of pleasant surprises. I just get like new leaves popping, just the same stuff you guys get at home I guess, but kind of like on steroids here I guess you could say. So today I want to show you some of my favorite plants. Now these don't actually belong to the shop, they just live in the shop. Some of these plants that I'm going to show you today actually just live in the aisles even though they're my plants and they're not for sale but I do keep them down here because obviously the conditions are great they get monitored with everything else and it's just a little bit easier without further ado let's just get into it I'm just going to pick them up as we go and just kind of show you why I'm loving them at the minute because there are some sexy ones so We'll start with a plant that I've been putting all over Instagram because I'm a little bit obsessed with it. I got it a while ago. I feel like I got it before Christmas, maybe early December, maybe late November. It didn't die back to a stump, but the new growth just wasn't very nice at all. It was coming through really weird. Now the growth has just started to come through good. Not only that, but it's huge. And I do need to mount this on a pole. I will do it at some point as soon as I get a pole. But until then, here is, let me grab him because he's absolutely amazing, he's so big. Here is my amazing, amazing philodendron serpents. Now, I will explain what I meant before about the shit leaves. So this is the oldest leaf, it kind of came in like this. I know it's absolutely ridiculous. It just grew kind of funky. Huge, don't get me wrong, huge, but a little bit funky. So after that, we got a leaf kind of the same. This is in my care as well. I don't really know what happened. Perhaps it was just a little bit dry and it got busted up coming out of the caterpillar. But I'm pleased to tell you that it's kind of, it's on its way now. It's definitely on its way. And this is the new boy that came out. Yep, that's him. How amazing is that? So I will point it out before somebody else does. It looks like there might be one or two fungal spots maybe creeping in on him. Maybe that was part of his problem. I'm going to treat that after this video, essentially, because I only noticed when I picked this up. And I think I've been taking pictures of this plant on Instagram, and I don't think I've noticed this marking until like today. So I'm gonna give it a little spray after this video, just in case. But can we just take a second? I'm gonna have to move back in the frame because it's that ridiculous. There, if I move like all the way back, you can really see how big this plant is. It's absolutely stunning. Obviously the back of the plant is pretty sexy as well. Let me just pull a bit of the old caterpill down so you can really see how awesome this is. I take it up to the camera like that and put it in front of me. It's not gonna focus on it amazingly, but it, it should a little bit. It's just the most amazing plant. Now, I've said this about serpents a lot before, and I'm not going to keep you too long today talking about, you know, in depth about serpents in general, but I say this a lot. This plant is genuinely an acquired taste. It 100% is, because not everyone likes this down here. This freaks a lot of people out, and I, I do understand that. It looks like it's going to be really plastic, but it's not. It does feel furry. I can't think of what kind of fur. It's like bristles, but there's no roughness to them. Really, they're very, very soft. It's like bristles made of silk. It's it's really bizarre, and I can't really describe the texture. I'm sure somebody else can probably do better than me in the comments, so if you have a good way of describing these, please have a go in the comments, because I cannot, I cannot feel what that's like. I'm probably going to cut these off as soon as I get it on a pole because if I just hold it out in front of me, it's not hot, is it? Like that is ridiculous. That is also not great. You might be wondering why they're still on the plant and that's just because technically it's green. Technically it's helping the plant out, right? Very shortly, I think I'm gonna cut it off so I can put them on a pole, but seriously, oh my God. Can I just say, interlude in the middle of this, I can already see that my hair is dropping out. Literally, I did my hair in front of house. I've walked 10 meters into this room. I have actually lowered the humidity in this room. It's sitting at just under 60% right now, and it's already dropping, and we're one plant in. I right, will pop him down because he's kind of juicing on me a little bit. He's just a little bit large to go anywhere else. And of course, I can't put him in the studio until I have a self-watering plant pot and he's all sorted out. So it, that is on the cards for him. Next plant. Hmm. Let's do this one. This isn't my plant. My plant is upstairs, but it's a twin of my plant. Okay, so I have a philodendron McDowell upstairs in my studio. I haven't brought him down. I've just grabbed an equivalent. 
I know that's really, really lazy, but I actually forgot to get him down. But this is another one of my favorite plants right now. Yes, this is really gangly. So obviously when I got this plant, this was a leaf that it shipped with, hence it's just a little bit wild. This was as well, because you can see the transit damage. This one has actually come out with me here. And then of course, this beautiful brand new one, that's why it's so pale. This one has come out here. You can actually see this time, because you couldn't see it last time I tried to take pictures of this plant you can see the pink veining just blushing up the front of the McDowell. Uh, now then, this is the best way I can hold it while I talk to you. The last video that this plant was featured in was the best and worst philodendron video. Now, a few people did say that this was Pastazanum and not McDowell. I did cover this on Instagram, but I am 99.99% sure that this is McDowell. A quick run through of why that is, even though I'll probably do a proper video on it as soon as I get hold of a Pastazanum. Anyway, you can see the blush pink down these veins, or at least I hope you can. I can see it on my monitor that they're blush pink, but I accept that maybe you can't elsewhere. You also get, don't know if you're going to be able to see this because it's just going to want to focus on me. There are two kind of lines on the petiole insertion there on the back of the McDowell. I realize they're not in focus necessarily, but just two little pink bits on the back of the petiole. That's another way to tell. What else have we got? We do have a red caterpillar. You just can't see it right here. I don't think Pastazanum have a red caterpillar. I think they have a green caterpillar. I might be wrong on that point, but I'm pretty sure the rest of the points are correct. So this is McDowell. It's a wonderful plant. It can grow a little bit gangly. Obviously, that is not my growth at all. I'm going to have to stand further back. That is not my growth at all. That is the growth from the supplier, but they're growing a little bit better with me. If I've got, if you ignore these two leaves here and just look at the other two, they're growing a little bit better. So that's really nice to see. I'm growing these out. These are my mother's. So they're really, really cute. It is one of my favorites at the minute. I don't really know why I'm in love with it so much. I think just because the leaves are so pillowy, I'm just kind of obsessed with it a little bit. So that's her. I'll pop her down. As I say, that's not my actual specific specific plant that's just a twin that I have down here so mine is actually upstairs so if you see it in future in a video where I do it upstairs it looks different that's why the next plant I have to show you I don't know what it is you've seen it before on my channel if you watch my videos weekly you will have seen it I think the last time I mentioned it was a couple of weeks ago and I showed you it kind of quite far back from the camera today I want to show you it properly because it's really special okay really really special i should have cut a leaf off but i haven't i probably will to be honest because it's a little bit crappy this right here i know i know that's ridiculous this here i don't know what it is this is my unknown anthurium now then a lot of people tell me that it is mudinum anthurium mudinum i disagree completely because the leaves tend to stay very very dark after they have developed. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure Anthurium mudinum goes just normal green. These don't, these stay, can you see how dark they stay? They stay super dark. This leaf's fully, fully hardened. It's, I think it's the first leaf that grew with me in my conditions here. And then I've got two that have grown recently. This is the, that's the leaf it was shipped with, by the way. I know it's ugly. This is one of the leaves, the last leaf with me. So that's the color it's gone and it stayed that color. I think higher light is making it stay that color. But seriously, look at that. That is insane. I'm oh, sorry, it's not really focusing on me. It's really hard to do this today. I'm using a new setup and I'm not liking it yet. So everything's a little bit off. Look at him, he stays like that. And obviously the new leaf that is still developing is coming out a little bit like that. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, I've been calling him Mysterious Dark Boy because we don't know what it is. I'm still no further forward. I do think that there is some Mudinum in this plant. I'm not saying it's not. I think it might be Mudinum crossed with something else. I'm not entirely sure. Again, if you think you know what it might be crossed with, let me know. This is a leaf here. I know it might not be focusing on me. This is a slightly older leaf here that is very glossy very, very glossy. This is the leaf it was shipped with and it's just, it's not looking its best. And then this is another leaf that stayed out with me. Let me know what you think it is. All I know is it's absolutely amazing. And to be honest, every time I walk in here, it definitely catches my attention over a lot of the other plants because it's kind of straight in as you come through the door and it just lives actually here. So you may have seen it on some of my videos. It's the most beautiful plant. Look at it. Oh my God, look at it, man. That's just gonna be just as sexy, you can tell. Really, really dark, sexy plant. Absolutely amazing. 
I'm gonna put him down because he's quite difficult to hold actually. Two plants left on my little list of things to show you. One's absolutely insane. So I might show you the one that's slightly less insane first. I think that might be a good idea. So you've seen this plant before, of course. This plant lives in my studio and it's one of my favorites. And it's not gonna look like much on first sight. You're just gonna think it's something else, but I'll explain what it is for those of you that maybe don't watch my channel as often. So the next plant that I'm absolutely gushing over at the minute, sorry, this is heavy, is this plant right here. This plant here is Monstera aurea large form. It is not small form. Yes, there is a difference. I don't know why people say there isn't. There is a huge, huge difference between the two plants. To be honest, I can probably show you the difference because I'm next to quite a few aurea right now, but let me just show you this plant first and I'll quickly go over the difference because why not? If we can get some informational content out of a video like this, let's. This is the new leaf. This is actually why I'm kind of gushing over it at the moment. Check that out. It's a half moon and it's so amazing. This is the old leaves. There's one here that got a little bit burnt as soon as I moved it up to the studio. There's another one, it's sizing up real, real fast. That's how you know it's large form as well. It's not a definitive way of telling, but it's a pretty good way of telling. That's obviously gonna harden off and go more yellow like these. It's just, it's still very new. It's still a bit floppy, if I'm honest. It's not fully hardened yet. So that's a really pretty plant. Now then, I don't know how well I can show you this. If I tilt that there. Sorry, I know this is not a great way to show you. I'm gonna have to like put it next to my head for you to see this. But if I turn it, you might be able to see how small those internodes are together. They're really, really small. If I put this plant down and I grab for you a small form Aurea because I have, oh, I don't know how many I have. Is there anything I can grab that's not gonna be all over the place? So this here, and this isn't a definitive way of telling either, but this is small form Aurea. So they've had the same light, the same everything, and this one's internodes are quite a bit bigger. You can see there, they're much, much further apart than the other one. They're also not sizing up quite as quickly as the other form as well. Um, I'm gonna pop that back. It's not a definitive way of being able to tell them apart, don't get me wrong. I guess you just have to trust me when I say it's large form. If anybody remembers, I think, I think it was in 2019, I did a video where I chopped in absolute huge Monstera. You could tell it was large form when I was chopping it. If you go back and watch that video, you can tell. The plant I just showed you before in the white pot, this guy, this plant here is a propagation from that plant. And honestly, there are so many differences. This is just gonna keep sizing up at a rate of knots. And I guess we'll just see when it's mature. I'll be able to show you properly the difference. So the leaves on this guy, the large form, can get like two, three feet across, no problem. A mature small form can't get that big. It can get kind of big, maybe a foot, maybe a bit larger across, but they won't be the same as this. They won't get the, the same amount of fenestrations. They won't get the same amount of holes and everything else. I do see a lot of people with the white variegated form that seem to think they have large form. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that's going around. I think a lot of people say that you get ruffles on the back of the leaves of a large form and nothing else and that the small form can't get it. That's not true. That's an absolute myth. I would love to do a video on the differences. I have mentioned this in a video, of course, before, but I think it'd be good to put it into a proper informational one. So I think I'm going to put that on my list of videos because I think it causes a lot of confusion with people. A lot of people seem to think they have a large form variegated Monstera and they don't. True large form variegated Monstera will cost you well into four figures. Seriously, well into four figures. I don't see them sold. I think I might have seen one sold in the last two years. They're really hard to get. So I think I'm gonna do a video on both of them because I think that's a good idea. I guess just trust me when I say this is large form, but the reason why I'm absolutely in love with it right now is because it's it's so close to fenestrating. I can, I can smell it, I can taste it. And of course we've got a full moon. Now, what I hope doesn't happen is that we don't get a yellow leaf, a green leaf, a yellow leaf, a green leaf. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm borderline afraid of half moons. I don't like them. I'd rather not have them on a plant because it makes the plant 10 times more unstable generally. Even when you propagate as well, the amount of times I've propagated a half moon node and a, a bud has come out of the side where it's green, I can't even tell you. Literally, they're not that good for propagation. So that's another plant that I'm really proud of at the minute. I'm really excited for it to fenestrate. When it does and it sizes up again, maybe the next leaf or the leaf after, I will be sure to put it on Instagram so you can see because I'm so excited. I'm hoping that eventually 
This plant grows as big as the one on my wall. And if you've seen my living wall, you know what I'm talking about. You know that whole thing. So I'm really, really excited for that. The last plant I have to show you, I think I did briefly mention its existence in the repot with me that I recently did, but you couldn't see it. I kind of reached up here and I pulled a leaf down and you got a tiny bit of leaf. But I kind of need you to understand how big this plant has gotten. So this plant I actually bought at the International Aroid Show in 2019. Am I right? Yes, because 2020 is a blip. Yes, 2019. And I think it only had a couple of leaves. I'd have to check. I think I cut it into two when I brought it back here and I've used the other one for propagation. I have some babies of it. And then this one is essentially the original, the mother plant. And I need you to know how amazing it is. Let me pick it up. You may or may not have worked out what plant I'm actually talking about, but let me tell you, this is an absolute brute. Can you see this yet? Yeah. Look at this. I have to stand back because it's that big. Look at the size of this. Seriously, look at the size of this. The aerials coming off this thing, I will come up to the camera with it, but the aerials coming off this thing are about nine inches long. It's ready to climb. And I do actually have a pot that I think I'm gonna put this into because the roots are coming out the bottom as well. I do have a pot to put this into so I can get it to climb. But this, if I haven't already mentioned how rude, is my philodendron UPI. It's an absolute stunner. Have you seen this? Have you seen it? I'll try and bring it up to the camera. I think he's missing a little bit of a lobe off this one. Look at that. It hasn't snapped off. It just, uh, I don't think it's developed. Oh, I'm trying really hard to uh, balance it on me. This pot here, you might be thinking, what on earth is that? It's a catch pot for some of the aerials to help it root. That's all it is. It's nothing fancy. I'll try my hardest, guys, to bring it up to the camera, but I don't think it's going to work. This is the newest leaf. This is so hard to do. Hopefully this isn't too blurry for you guys. This is the newest leaf. It's a little bit smaller, but I think that's because it wants to climb and it, it kind of can't. So it's going to size down a little bit. If you notice your plants sizing down, but they're producing aerials, it's kind of because they want to climb. So it's probably time to get it on a pole or whatever. This leaf here is quite nice. Right next to me, that's quite sexual. Uh, these leaves here off my shoulder are quite sexual. He's obviously missing an ear. I have no idea why just a beautiful plant. I think I am going to actually have to stand back and talk about it this way, guys, because it's actually too big to hold up, to be quite honest. So I bought this particular plant from a very prominent collector in the US, and I'm sure he told me this is a piece of the original UPI collected from the wild by Yup Moonen, I believe it was. Can't remember the year, but I think it's Yup Moonen that collected it. That's really special to me. I remember when I got it, it looked not the best. And a few people were like, what, what on earth's the matter with the plant? Because I think I put it on Instagram. It had algae all over the leaves where it was growing in this collector's greenhouse. And it just reached a point at the top of the greenhouse where it was just covered in algae and it was just growing. So that's why it looked a bit funky. Obviously now we're not in the same situation and it's becoming the big majestic tree that it is. It's just massive. I don't know if you get a sense of scale. You probably do. I mean, I'm stood right now. I'm probably stood back two and a half meters from the camera, maybe. Beautiful, beautiful plant. I'm so proud of it. It's, I don't know where it's gonna live once it's on a pole. I think that's part of the reason why I haven't pulled it because there's no real place to put it if it's on a pole. I think I'm gonna have to put it in an aisle and then it's literally just gonna have to sit in an aisle like this. So those are just a few of the house plants that I have here that are mine that I have either new growth on or I'm just kind of proud of them or I just really want to just show them off and show you what's cool about them in a the minute. <gasps> There's a plant I forgot about. There's a plant I forgot about. How can I forget about this last plant? The UPI wasn't the last plant. It wasn't the last plant. Give me one moment. I can't believe I forgot about this plant. It's because it's not next to me, that's why. My goodness. Right, so. The next plant I have to show you, you have seen before. And this plant, when you saw it, well, not everyone's seen it before, obviously, but my studio tour, I panned past an anthurium and I believe I forgot to put the name of the plant, I think, like in text on the screen when I was showing off the plant. And a lot of people were like, what is that? This is that plant. This right here, I'm gonna move back again because she's quite large now. I don't know why she's growing like a big trident. I actually don't know why that's happening. But this here is my beautiful queen anthurium. And I think the reason why people were like, yo, what is it? Is because of these lobes here. If you look like that, these lobes have more of like a handlebar kind of vibe, 
than a typical queen, which I don't think I can get. There's nothing here. I think it's a, is it a few aisles down. Yeah, my queens are like two aisles that way, so I can't really get one right now. But typically, if you have a queen at home, you may or may not have lobes quite like this. A lot of the time, they're much closer together, like, for example, like a crystal item or something. This plant hasn't done that, and I thought it was just a random leaf that was doing it. So I watched it in the shop, and then it gave me a second leaf. So this is the first leaf that I noticed this behavior on this beautiful handlebar situation here. So I saw that and I thought, hmm, okay. Don't ask me why it's sagging. It's perfectly healthy. It just likes to sag. And then it gave me another leaf here. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. The shape has still persisted because I honestly thought it might be a humidity thing or a light thing. So I started really watching this plant at that point. Thought, right, okay, if we get three leaves, that might just be how this plant is. And it is a queen anthurium, but it just presents itself a little bit differently. And I find that really exciting. And that's why I wanted to show you it today. So this is the brand new leaf that I don't think, yeah, it's not even hardened yet. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. That's level with my head there. If you're wondering how big this plant is, I'm standing back so you can obviously get it in the screen. But that's how big this current leaf is on this plant. That's level with my head right now, just to give you a good idea. That is absolutely stunning. So yeah, these ears, these lobes seem to be persistent on the plant. That really excites me because I have two Queen Anthuriums in my studio. You may or may not have seen both of them, but the other one I have, and I think I featured it on last week's video, the Anthurium best and worst video, that had normal lobes. It just had the lobes on the top that were really close together. This one is different and I'm very, very excited about him because I think he's absolutely stunning. And I tell you what, I honestly think I prefer these kind of lobes to the other lobes. That's probably going to be a very unpopular opinion. It really is. But I kind of prefer these ones. There's just something really unique about them. It made the Anthurium unique enough that people didn't even know it was a queen. Hence, a lot of people saying, yo, what, what on earth is that? I remember saying it was a queen and everyone was really shocked. So I just think it's really cool that you can get these kind of variations. You can see here, if I do this, you can see how soft he is. Because here's a leaf that is hardened. Doesn't really do that. This leaf here is just completely, completely soft still. So eyes on the prize for this one, guys. It's absolutely stunning. Thank you very much for spending this little bit of time with me and my horrendous sunburn on my chest. Ooh, that's nasty. I do think I might do this kind of video more often. By that, I don't mean every month, just maybe every couple of months, I might throw a video like this out there where I just pick some of my favorites in the shop. Obviously, in this case, these were all my plants but there's sometimes a lot of really cool stuff in the shop that I don't get to show you guys because then it goes out the door and I just think it might be really cool to show you some things because honestly, if I could quantify how much you've seen on my channel that I have in terms of weird and wonderful plants and how much I've shown you, it's not scratching the surface. So I think I'm gonna do this more and I'm gonna start plucking out little bits of you know stuff here and there because I think it'd be really cool. There's one thing I'm gonna show you before I go because I get so many questions about it and I've just noticed it off shot while I'm talking. So I'm gonna show you it because a lot of people ask me about it. And to be honest, I probably should have put it in the video because I am obsessed with it. This here, right here, a lot of people ask me, what on earth is it? I want it, or some people say that it's ill. It's not ill. This is, what is this? Alocasia zebrina reticulata, or just Alocasia reticulata? I actually can't remember now. I'm stood here in front of the camera, I can't remember. But it has the same stems as a zebrina has but the leaves are like this really cool pattern. I promise you it's not sick. I promise you it's not viral. This is the plant, Google it. You will see tons of them, the same um, really gorgeous plant. I do get a lot of questions on, will I sell this one? Do I sell them in general? Where did I get it from? I bought this a long time ago. And I mean a long time ago, like two years ago. This should be way bigger than what it is. It's been neglected. I think I bought it as a plug and I grew it from like a plug, maybe this big. So it's doing okay. It had a bit of a wobble, hence this weird little leaf here. But it's doing okay and it's staying in here. I'm terrified of repotting it in case I kill it because I only have one. I don't know of anywhere that sells them. I don't know where you can get them from. I don't know, sorry, I'm putting it back. I don't know how rare they are. I know literally nothing about that plant, but by the, by the way that I get lots of questions asked about it, I'm guessing it's not something that you maybe see every day. 
I don't know. Um, but that's that anyway. And I thought I'd show you that because literally everyone asks me about it. So without further ado, I'm going to love you and leave you. I've kept you quite a while. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It actually does help. I know you're probably thinking, why does that help? It just does. It's a YouTube algorithm thing. No one really understands it. We just know that it kind of helps. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment on anything you like about what I've said, what I've shown. Maybe you've got some favorite things that you have at the minute that you would just love to be able to show the world because they're just in that peak point of spring where things just perk up and they just look so sexy. Then about you, but my plants are definitely doing that at the minute. So if you've got anything you want to share, please do sit down below. And if you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe. That's it for this week's video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.